what are the main sort of features then that you we that, that we get the main benefits if you like from having a a, a processing unit a, a chip as you call it that's closer to a biological brain than what we've developed over the last 70 or 80 years there are some very deep differences the current architecture was designed was envisioned by Neumann in the 1940s so basically the process of process data in the sense that it moves a lot of data from one place to another in order to do that we need a large number of transistors we are using a lot of power for that and the the processing in itself does not think only transfer data from let's say from our hard disk to the RAM and vice versa. And in this situation, the thinking is being, is being done by the software, which is on top of everything, right? In nature, in biology, everything is, is in the same spot, right? In our brains, as an example, we have the storage, we have the computing, and we have the random access memory. And because you have that, the power consumption is very low. Obviously, the brain has the capability of learning by itself. We don't need internet connection to download that to app or do lots of other things. So we can be achieved that by learning. AI systems, uh, AI software systems, such as large language models and deep neural networks, they do consume a lot of power because the underlying hardware is built in such a way in, in which, okay, you need to move lots of data from one thing to another, right? And the power consumption, power consumption is, uh, is actually quite huge. And as a matter of fact, a single simple ChatGPT query, it's actually 50 times more expensive than a single Google query for that. And this is why what we are doing paves the way towards an artificial brain, which can be perceived as both a new and novel type of chip of uh, computing, actually. And at the same time, enables practically new, new, we enable new forms of AI. 